Tomorrow, Vice President Harris travels to Pennsylvania for a campaign rally in Erie. She'll be back in the state on Wednesday for another rally. And in between, on Tuesday, Governor Tim Walz will blitz western Pennsylvania. It all comes on the heels of President Obama's first event for Team Harris in Pittsburgh just last week. We don't need four more years of arrogance and bumbling and bluster and division. America's ready to turn the page. Kamala Harris is ready to do the job. This is a leader who has spent her life fighting on behalf of people who need a voice and a champion. Put down your phone and vote. Grab your friends and family and vote. Vote for Kamala Harris. Joining us now, Pennsylvania's senior senator, Democrat, Bob Casey. Oh, you know what? Hey, Senator. Mm. Senator Great Casey, to be with you. Thank you. It's so good to see you. You were sitting on the stage while President Obama was in Pittsburgh, and there was a, a, a point there where he, he talked about you um, and said, you ain't no show pony. Uh, let's play this for you. <laughs> and Bob Casey, he's not a show pony. All the guy cares about is doing the job and looking after you, the people he was elected to serve. That's the kind of person we need to send back to Washington. That's the kind of person who's going to help Kamala get stuff done. Folks who share our values and will do what they can to move this country forward rather than backward. So, Senator Casey, that, that I, I have a, a, a deep appreciation of that because I was on the opposite side of your first election for the United States Senate, uh, trying trying to defeat you, sir. Uh, and I remember, I remember having uh, just being straight up, have, remember having conversations with folks at the national level and certainly in the state of Pennsylvania. I said, "There's something about this guy we need to be mindful of because he connects with people in a way." that our candidate at the time was not, even though our candidate was touting the pro-life agenda and all of that. Um, you uh, stood in that space uh, as an honest broker on the subject, and, and it really turned heads in, in a way that I think still turned. And that's, I think that's exactly where the president was going for. How does, how does Pennsylvania stand up today? It has changed a lot from when you first uh, got to the Senate. The dynamics are very different on the ground than they were then. Uh, how is the Democratic Party situated with Kamala Harris at the top uh, to prosecute the case that her candidacy for the presidency is not just necessary because of the opponent that she's running against, but because of standing in the breach on behalf of people will make a difference for them when it matters in, you know, 26, 27, and 28. Yeah, Michael, great to be with you and, and Simone and Alicia. Look, this is a, uh, this is a state where the economy is usually the center, centerpiece of the argument in both presidential races and Senate races. <clears throat> and in my case, and, and I think this is true for Vice President Harris as well, uh, the, 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 the main issue we hear mostly about are costs, Co cost of living, just making ends meet. And when you take a stand, as I have and Anne, Anne has, Kamala has, to take on uh, what I call greedflation, going after price gouging, uh, decidedly in favor of a middle-class tax cut, helping folks pay for childcare, helping folks make ends meet, when you take on those fights, uh, which are, I think, at the core of what people are concerned about, you're going to piss off a lot of billionaires. And I've done that. And that's why they've come into this state not just to attack Kamala, but also in a very focused way to attack me. And uh, for example, my opponent's got a singular super PAC set up just for him. It's the only one of its kind in the country that is uh, hitting us pretty hard because those billionaires know that I'm not going to vote for their tax cuts. So when you take positions like that, you're going to get knocked around as I have. But we're going to keep working to get to get our vote out and to get Kamala's vote out to win this race. So I'd ask people to go to BobCasey.com to help us. Senator, we are always uh, appropriately suspicious of, of polling around here, given 
the pattern of polling that we have seen in the past. But let me pull this up with that caveat from Quinnipiac, um, October 3rd to 7th. Um, you up 51 percent, McCormick 43 um, percent. That's among likely voters in Pennsylvania, margin of error about 2.6. One, do those numbers match your internal numbers, Senator? Um, go ahead. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I wish they did. <laughs> Look, po polling will bounce around, but we're in a very close race now. We're probably in a two-point race in, in my race. I think uh, Kamala Harris is about close to that. We're, we're very, much, very much aligned. And I think the one of the reasons for that is just what I spoke about, the the, the concentrated effort by by very powerful forces, the wealthiest people on the planet Earth, uh, descending upon Pennsylvania to to hit both of us pretty hard. But I do think in the end that uh, if we keep working and we keep there's still some a lot of voters still up for grabs, and we've got to earn their vote and continue to uh, speak directly to this economic message. Uh, Senator, you had a debate on October 3rd with your um, Republican challenger, uh, McCormick. And I just want to play there. You all had some substantive exchanges on the economy. Abortion was also a major topic of conversation during this debate. And uh, I, I want to play that part for our audience. When the decision was made to overturn Roe, his reaction was that that decision made him, quote, very, very happy, unquote. So that's where he's been on this issue. Senator Casey said he wanted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Senator Casey was only for one exception, which was life in the mud. Now Senator Casey is saying this. He also just signed legislation that allowed abortions up into the ninth month. Now, I don't know uh, what Mr. McCormick was talking about because senators don't <coughs> sign legislation. Maybe he say support it. I don't know. But also this abortion up to the ninth month thing, it is just poppycock and it is, um, uh, what are the words I can use on television? Mm -hmm. Very deeply disappointing and offensive to everyone who 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 knows better and, and every woman I feel like in the country, regardless of who they voted for in the last election. But Senator, talk about this, the, the how ab ab abortion and how this is playing out in your race, um, because I, I found that exchange quite interesting on the debate on the debate stage. Yes, yeah, Simone, it's, it's a major issue in the race uh, for two reasons. Number one is the the whole world changed in 2022. And I think a lot of Americans, certainly a lot of Pennsylvanians asked them whether or not they want to live in a country that's going to ban abortion or or not. And I think that's why a lot of people across the state want to know where we stand. For example, it's, it's a very, in our race, it's a very clear choice. You're either going to vote to restore Roe, which is the, the Women's Health Protection Act, or not. And my opponent uh, will never support that legislation. And he's, as you heard there from, from my answer, uh, that was his reaction when Roe was overturned, was saying it made him very, very happy. So it's a very clear choice. And, and I think it's also uh, very evident from, from where we are. We've got a lot of close Senate races. The Senate majority is up for grabs. And um, my race and a few others, maybe two others at the most, two or three others, will decide the majority. So if, if folks out there are concerned about this issue or are concerned about costs, but if you're just concerned about keeping a majority uh, in the United States Senate, I hope they will help us by going to BobCasey.com. I, I know we got to go, but I, I think it's important because this is happening in states, especially battleground states. Senator, can you give us just a quick 30 seconds on efforts to undermine the voting process in the state of Pennsylvania? Are there are you seeing any concerted effort by Republicans to deregister people, affect their impact uh, to get to the polls? Michael, it's it's more of a, a broad-based um, uh, argument or or uh, or uh, allegation that they're going to continue to make that somehow there's there's something uh, not, not right going on that something's going to happen when people vote, and I think that continual lying about the last election uh, is affecting how people approach this election. The good news is I think Democrats and independents and in a, a big number of Republicans. Are going to move are going to move beyond that and just get out and vote. I think we're going to have a big vote, but uh, and I and I think we've got to continue to earn that vote. But it's going to be very close in both Kamala Harris's race and in my race for the Senate. 